Okay. Mm. We have a memory verse this month for our theme in regards to getting the game. I want you to read this together with me, please. As each has received the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Each one has received a gift. And if you're in Christ, I would say the day you became a Christian, you received a very precious gift, the gift of God's Spirit within you and in your life, and you receive forgiveness of sins. What a wonderful gift, amen? amen? But He's also entrusted us with other abilities, gifts, talents, resources to use to serve one another, not ourselves, but to serve one another because we want to be good stewards of God's grace. God has given you grace and we ought to be good stewards sharing that with others. <clears throat> Turn with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy chapter 4. <coughs> 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'd like to read verses 2 to 4. The Apostle Paul writing to uh, his young protege, Timothy, to encourage him and sort of gives him his commission, his mandate in ministry, which I think applies to all of God's people to some degree. 2 Timothy 4, beginning with verse 2, Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. How important it is that we stay true to the Word of God. It's critical in our Christian walk. That we remain faithful to God and His Word. Paul says the time is coming. Now as I look about our world today, I'd say that time's already here. The time is coming when people won't put up with sound doctrine. And they'll believe other things. And my goodness, are there a host of worldviews out there today that believe all kinds of things. Apart from God's Word. My question today is, are we going to be a bench warmer, or are we going to get in the game? Are we going to get in the game to fulfill the mandate that we read here from 2 Timothy? I wonder if perhaps, even in this crowd, there might be some who have sat on the bench far too long and need to get into the game. I got two points, it's very simple. We're thinking football today. We must have a strong defense. We must have a strong defense. We don't want to find ourselves scoring for the other team. Now I want you to watch this little video clip. We can get it up here. Oops. Now those of you who know football knows what went wrong. <laughs> the defense started off strong there, caused the fumble, they recovered the fumble, but the guy ran the wrong way and wound up scoring for the other team. In our Christian life and walk, how many times perhaps have we gone the wrong way and made it easy for the opponent to score? We must have 
a strong defense. But every time perhaps we feel guilty about certain situations, we may be making it easy for the opponent to score. When we fail to get into God's Word, when we fail to commune with God, when we fail to use the gifts He's given us, we may be making it easy for the opponent to score. Let's not make it easy for them to score. We must have a strong defense. Now, Thursday night, my team played. Green Bay Packers. Played <laughs> the Chicago Bears. Fourth quarter, one minute to go. Green Bay is down 17 to 13. They have the ball first and goal on the Bears' eight yard line. Four consecutive plays, and they could not score. And they lost the game. Now, I didn't get to actually watch it. I was watching the play by play on my phone, the little app I got. I got so flustered, I almost threw my phone on the floor. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Four plays. You couldn't get it. Eight yards to score a touchdown win the game. They had the opportunity to win the game and seal it. But to their credit, the Chicago Bears defense held. The defense won the game. We must have a strong defense in our life. In Ephesians, Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. The shield, the breastplate, all the pieces, and most of that armor, most of what he describes there is for defense. We've got to take a stand and defend our faith. We've got to take a stand against those fiery darts of the evil one that he showers upon us from time to time. We've got to take that stand. We've got to have a strong defense. Secondly, we also need a strong offense. Defense is important. It's critical. Keep the enemy from scoring as much as you can. But we've also got to have a good offense. The offense, generally speaking, scores the majority of points to win the game. Once in a while, the defense will recover a fumble or an interception. But the majority of the time, it's the offense. Okay, where's, where's my, where are my huddle boys? I had a couple of boys here. I said they were going to be the is... Oh, they're down there. I'm going to borrow somebody else. Can I borrow? Who, who wants to volunteer? Come on, yeah, come on up. Yeah, I need, I need to, at least two or three. Somebody else. Yeah, come on up, guys. No, Colby. Colby, yeah. yeah. Here comes my defensive line right here. Yeah, all right. Come on up, fellas. All right. Okay, this is the one time, perhaps in a lifetime, that you get to see me play a musical instrument. There it is. Okay. Now, the football team, they get on the field. They're all dressed up in their uniforms. They got their helmets, their pads, everything. They get on the field. What do they do before they make the play? They have a huddle. So come here, guys. We're all huddled up. Okay, we're all huddled up. Okay, now. Colby, that is one sharp tie you got. <laughs> Isn't that sharp? Doesn't he look good, guys? Delay of game. <laughs> okay, now we're back five. Okay. Where do you want to go to lunch? <laughs> Burger King. You like Burger Where do you want to go? McDonald's. Okay. Okay. Y'all want to go eat after we get done here with this game. Okay. Up, oh, up. Oh. Delay of game. Okay, guys. Thanks. <laughs> I want him on my team. <laughs> Defensive line. If all you do is stay in the huddle, you're not in the game. You get penalized if you stay in there too long. 
You get in the huddle, you encourage one another, you stay focused on what the play is you want to make, then you go and you initiate it. But if all we do is stay in the huddle, we're not going to accomplish our goal of getting that score. I wonder sometimes. I see a gathering like this as God's people in the huddle. We're in the huddle to encourage one another. We've got God's playbook already made out for us, and we're, getting, we're, we're sort of calling the plays we want to make. But we've got to get out of the huddle to score. We've got to make that play. And not all plays are necessarily good when you're playing football. Oh, it looks good in the playbook. You call a play, oh my goodness, they may knock you back a few yards. That doesn't mean it's the end of the game. You get back in that huddle, you encourage one another, you make another play because your goal is still to get to that end zone and score. And even the best teams, even the best teams, even if they go undefeated, even if they go to the Super Bowl, during the year, they have some bad plays. Not every play they make is perfect. Not every play necessarily advances them towards their goal. They may have a setback, but they get back in that huddle, call another play, and they keep moving. They don't just talk about their woes and critique one another and criticize one another. They've got an offense. They've got a goal in mind. And a play that was bad today, next week, might work with another team. The circumstances may be different. So we huddle together to encourage one another. And if, if, if we made a bad play, maybe somebody didn't understand the play that was called by the quarterback and he went the wrong way. You kind of know it when it happens, don't you? You feel kind of embarrassed. You get back in the house and say, I blew it, guys. But we can't focus on criticizing him and chewing him out. We've got to call the next play and get out there and encourage him to make the right play. We've got a purpose and a job to do. We're to praise, to worship, to serve our God. And if we're unable to do it effectively, don't you think that may be frustrating to God? I think God gets frustrated. I think he got frustrated with Moses a little bit. Well, I, I, I can't talk more. God has already shown him miraculous things that he would be with him. He said, why do you want me to go to those people? I think he's a little frustrated. He provided Aaron to be part of the team. To be a voice. I think God gets frustrated with us sometimes when we don't get in the game. <coughs> we either stay on the bench, in the stands, or we just like looking pretty in the huddle. <coughs> Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We're to encourage one another, to help sharpen one another, not beat one another up. <coughs> We're not to make our, make our blades blunt, but to sharpen each other. Sitting on the bench and being a spectator might be entertaining. It could be very entertaining. It may be comfortable, but our coach is calling us to get into the game. In all sports that I'm aware of, Training and practice is critical for success. To have a winning season. They train on and on, various drills, over and over, exercises, and plays. They exercise their bodies, weight training, all kinds, depending on your sport, of training and practice over and over and over again to be efficient so you can achieve victory. And if you don't practice, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Well, I'll just miss practice once in a while. I'll just go half the time. I don't need to do the weight training this week. I don't need to go over my drills so much this week. I'll wait another week or so and we'll go. We have a spirit like that, we're going to hinder the team from accomplishing its purpose. 
We need to stay in shape for those things. Now, the scriptures tell us to be prepared in season and out of season. Training is critical. So I'll have the praise team come back up this time. And let me just close with these thoughts. If we're not making it to practice and the training that we need for our team, how can we effectively serve God? How can we effectively serve God if we won't participate in the training and the practice that we need? Christian life's never been promised to be easy. You get on that football field, you've got your playbook, you've got your team. Even after practice and training, you've got to know that there are guys on the other side of the ball, and I don't want to be on the other side of the ball with him, <laughs> who are trying to knock you off your game. You may take some bruises. You may take some hits. You might even get knocked down, but you get back in that huddle, you get encouraged, you get back on that line, and you make the next play. Because that next play might be the key play for the whole game. And I dare say, even the winning players come off that field with bruises and cuts, abrasions, injuries. Are you in the game? I had to get my Packers up there again. <laughs> or are you a bench warmer? Just sitting comfortably, you know, with the ball cap on. Oh, yeah. Which are you? Which are you? And God has a place for you to serve. Look on that list again in that bulletin insert. Find a place to serve. If it's not there, write one down if you think. We can always add to it. As we seek to serve him and grow. Get in the game in some way. You know, there are things you can even do from home. There are things you can do from home. You can just think about it. You can pray for people. You can send cards of encouragement. You can pick up the phone. Even from home, you can have an active ministry. Get in the game. So what's that memory verse again? Let's read that one more time. As each has received the gift, you did to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. I hope you'll make the decision to get involved. Get off the bench and get into the game where God wants to use you so that victory can be achieved. And what is the victory we see? Souls coming to know Him is victory. Let's stand as a stand.
Guide us, O oh God, not to be spectators or bench warmers, but to get in the game so that the victory is even so much sweeter. Guide us to that end, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.